Father, we thank you. We thank you for everything you've done for us and, and for this day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. There's some good things going to happen today because you're a good, good Father, and you have so much for us. It is your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And the sphere of your rule is the kingdom, and we want our hearts to be ruled by you, so that we can get out of the way, even now, to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, we have had so many exciting things have happened in the, in the past weeks here, and services, and different things like that, and God has us on uh, uh, dealing with uh, how to be a part of a prayer team, how to be a part of prayer. Um, and ministering to people, whether it be out on the streets or in a prayer line or different things like that. And we've talked about um, being moved by compassion being that, that first base thing. We have to know how to be moved by compassion. Jesus was moved by that. That's the compass, um, you know, of your passion is compassion. And it, it is, is, is that way of being able to be God-driven rather than uh, self-driven. And we're seeing this a lot. Um, you know, one of the speakers last night uh, mentioned it again, having to, to see how often it really is a flesh thing to pray for somebody. And it's become such a big deal in the sense of, um, you know, I got a word for you or I got a prophecy for you. And we go running and it's really self driven more than it is like, I really want this person saved. I really want to make a difference in their life. I, this is not about me. I want to be in the background even. I, I just want them, if they walk away and they had this encounter, I, I want them to say, I don't even know who that guy was or who that person was. I can't remember what they look like, but man, uh, Jesus showed up, right? And you'll find that, uh, you know, anyone from Reinhard Bunky to whoever, you know, when they uh, are ministering, their success in ministry is really God's success. And, um, but it's because they've learned how to get out of the way. Uh, the key part is to be out of the way while staying in authority. It messes with your head, right? Submitted to authority while taking authority. It'll mess with your head. And so uh, we're going into uh, the next part of the series. And the, the thing I want to mention, and I've said before, is uh, faith only operates on the known will of God. And so when we approach somebody to pray or we approach a situation or you get a telephone call, a lot of us are, are kind of like on a prayer chain, boom, it just starts happening. Um, those can be so powerful, but so dangerous all at the same time, all right? Because on that chain, if not everybody is in unity, you got this one praying this and that one's praying the other thing, and it's all coming from different angles, right? There, it would be better... Um, really, I've been thinking about this. If we get some word, then spread the word about the word that we're praying. I think that's what we need to start doing. Um, you know, because otherwise your opinion will get in the way. There'll be different things that'll, that'll happen that'll get in the way. Or, oh, I feel so bad. Or I'm hurting about that person that we need to pray for or whatever. And you will speak what you feel. And so a lot of times prayer chains can end up in gossip chains. You know, or it's really like, oh, yeah, sure, we'll pray. Oh, thank you for calling. Thank you. We never really do pray, right? We, but we want to know the details. We want to know when that next thing is going to happen. And so whatever did happen to Pete, you know, um, <laughs> rather than getting on our knees and praying. And, and what I've done is uh, try to make a habit. I don't care if I'm driving or I, don't want to, I get that telephone call. If I say praying, it's right now, Right. In fact, the person like, could you pray? And I'm like, yes, let's agree right now. You just get in the habit of now. Now, because it's our flesh, it's the world, it's, the, it's our distractions or whatever. Well, I'll get to that. I'll get to it. And we never get to it. And so we have to pay attention to that. But know that it's the known will of God that we're going to speak into that person's life. Well, what if you don't know the will of God? See, what we, what we do is we end up saying, well, to know the will of God, I don't know, is, is he going to heal the person or not? Right? Is this going to happen or not? Should they prosper or not? Well, you have to know the will of God, and his will is his precepts, his commands, his ways of doing things. So we already know it's his ways of doing things to heal. It's his precept. It's his command. 
and he told us to go into all the world, right? Preach the good news. What is the good news? It's salvation that touches every area of our life and takes all the limits off. So we already know that's his will. So when we approach a person, we have to stay on the will side. We have to be over here. They could be totally out of his way of thinking, his precepts and his commands. They're hurting. When we approach a person, we've got to stay on the will side. God's will, we favor his side, his viewpoint on it. Um, words like, well, I know I'll pray for you, but you, you never know. Or I'll pray for you, uh, but we, we don't know. I mean, you just got to. You just got to give this over to God and just see what happens. And, you know, there's those types of phrases that say, uh, I'm not really sure what his will says. So an example of that is if you had a great uncle that was very wealthy. It would be really sweet to have a few of those. Um, and he passed away, right? And you go sit before the lawyer. And the lawyer says, this is what belongs to you, right? Somebody is going to want to contest that will if they don't want you to have those finances, that house, that land, or whatever it is. And, um, but yet, if they do that, they can come up against you. They can contest it. But you have that piece of paper that says, check it out. <laughs> it says right here, Uncle Floyd left me this, right? And, um, and it's mine. Mine. It's mine. And um, so that's what we, why we have to be in the word and get that established in us so that when we approach the situation, we already know this is what his word says about it. Now, we don't know the outcome of that situation. We don't know, but we better have it established up front. This is how God works. This is how he rolls. This is his kingdom. This is, and so then gravitate toward that. And anything that's opposite of that, don't let it come out your mouth. Right? Do a heart check that says, ah, I think I'm going down the negative. I better move over here. Fear will get you away from the will of God, right? You're believing, but you're believing away from the will of God. So I would rather, and I've said this before, you know, uh, be dying and speaking faith on my way out than to die with unbelief on my lips. You know, I'd rather be saying, I am the heel of the Lord. But, you know, see, <laughs> see, guys, I'm the heel of the Lord. And I just step out and go, well, I am the heel of the Lord. I just stepped out of my body. I'm still the heel of the Lord. Because that's what his word says. And so we gravitate toward the known will of God, and you hang there. Where I see it in many times in prayer lines or in, in circles or just even, like I said, prayer chains. It'll be like, well, I prayed this, and this one prayed that. And, and, and I mean, the letters to heaven is like, Okay, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of confusion that can happen because we're not basing it in his word. It's the word and the spirit that will get things done. I have a pastor come in. He's going to be sharing um, on some other principles that will take us into the next steps. I really believe that as uh, revival is happening or as we're moving into different parts of the region or even here in our church, um, we're going to need to learn how to work together on the known will of God. That means not always us praying. You guys are praying. That's why you're here. You pray. And so the more equipped we can get, the better off we are. All right. We are talking about prayer ministry or ministering in prayer, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or... Bible study or prayer line here or whatever. That's, that's the topic. That's the theme. Uh, what Mary talked about last week was the first thing we have to have is compassion. To be moved in compassion. To actually care about them. To actually have empathy. Feel with them. Faith worketh by love. If we don't love the people we're praying for, faith doesn't work. And that, that's a simple point, but that point kind of goes over a lot of charismatic prophecy people, full gospels, heads, because, you know, just to cut to the short of it, we're on a power trip. 
we want to see the power of God move and we want to see him do something through us and bless God you're going to get healed if you want to or not because the word says you know and we're on a power trip and the actual I hurt with you I hurt for you I moved with compassion because if I was in your position that would really stink doesn't even enter our mind Oh, you can't sleep at night? Well, in the name of Jesus, bless God, we're going to fix this. And there's no movement of love in us whatsoever. And then we pray and nothing happens. And we go, I don't, I don't understand. It must be their unbelief. Maybe it was our lack of compassion. I know that's not shouting material. <laughs> but <laughs> Jesus, it says uh, a few places. He was moved with compassion when he saw the people. So whenever Jesus was ministering, there was compassion flowing. Compassion flows out of love. Faith works by love. So it's, it's really, you know, we only took one little segment on it, but it actually is huge, and it is the starting point. So when we're going to lay hands on people or pray for people, uh, I don't remember who it was. Uh, one of the speakers we had here in the last couple of years made the same point. He said, when you're praying for someone, if you want to see God do something, when you pray for them, actually care about them. Not about the result. Not about hearing the Holy Spirit. Not about do I have the right scripture to speak into their life. Have I got a word from God for them? Care about them. Love them it makes a huge difference in the outcome and you say well what do you do if you don't love them back up and say God I, I'm not feeling anything for this person and their situation back up a little bit say just give me a second I want to pray about something here and back up and quietly pray about yourself and say what is my issue here God I need some compassion Holy Spirit give me some empathy here for this person. I want to minister to them out of love and ask him to well that up in your heart. And again, love is often interpreted as an emotion. It's not an emotion. If you go to the, it, it affects our emotions. But if you study love scripturally and go to the deepest core of it, it is not an emotion. It's obedience to the will of God. If you love me, you will obey. That is what, if you're going to ask God what he's looking for to see whether we love him or not, he's not looking for emotion. I mean, the scripture, Jesus said it in John 14. John said it. The apostle of love said it numerous times in the book of 1 John. If you love me, you'll cry, you'll shake, you'll weep. You'll be moved with emotion. None of that shows up in the word. If you love me, you'll obey. So when you're praying for someone, you don't have to have this huge emotional burst of what we interpret as love. But love in obedience does move your emotions, or it should. So there will be a little emotional movement. There might be a lot of emotional movement. Do you know that the word heal means to serve like a servant? That's the meaning of the Greek meaning of the word heal means to serve like a servant. If you love them, you want to serve them. Not show them how powerful you are and how God flows through you and we're going to get this job done. We're going to serve them to see them fixed. That is the mentality of obedience. God died, Jesus died, so everyone could be healed or fixed or brought peace or delivered or whatever their situation is. Jesus died for that. We are his servants greatest among you will be the servant of all we will serve this person what Jesus 
bought and paid for. So we bring the platter and say, here, let me help you fix this. Not here, watch me do this. That's a whole different mentality. And when you bring that mentality into a prayer line of watch me operate, it becomes very prideful, very self-centered, and the anointing will lift. But if we come into the prayer line with the mentality of this is what Jesus has for you, let me serve you. Got my apron on, got my platter. Yeah, that really, that's, that's ugly what you're having to deal with. Let me serve you. It's, a, it's an attitude. It's a mentality. And out of that love or that compassion to take what he wants them to have, faith kicks into gear because faith operates by love. Just wanted to tack that on the end of the, the compassion part because we didn't spend much time on that. But it's huge. It's a big, big piece. And it's probably good if we would take some time and ask the Holy Spirit to teach us about the compassion part individually um, and really get a handle on that. We jump-started you, and now you and God talk about that. You and the Holy Spirit talk about that. So we're, we're in a prayer line. We're at the neighbor's house. They're sick. We're at the hospital. Somebody got banged up in a car accident. They've got a broken bone. They're laying there. They're in pain. Their ribs are broken, uh, and we're going to pray for them. Okay, so the first thing we're looking for that we're going to operate out of is compassion. All right. Get some empathy. Get some, wow, this hurts me to see how much it's hurting you. And this hurts me because this is so wrong from what he wants for you. And I want to get in here and serve you and give you what I've got so that that gets fixed okay what's the next thing in line that and and again different you know there's all kinds of prayer trainings and prayer ministry trainings out there and depending upon what flavor you come from denominationally they'll have different points priorities <laughs> um and i looked at some and i thought yeah that's not us that's not the direction we come from because I, I went through a whole prayer manual online, uh, and it basically was to minister to them so they know they're loved. Someone cares. Weren't looking for healing. Weren't looking for deliverance. Weren't looking for God to make a difference. Because, see, those things all passed away. Our job is when we pray for them and minister to them is so they know that the church cares and that someone loves them. And then at the end of the manual, it said, you know, it had a chapter on, and you really have to help them understand that whatever they're going through, this is all for the glory of God, and they just need to get that attitude so they can get through it. And they're still sick. We didn't pray for healing. We didn't pray for deliverance. We didn't pray for broken bones to go back in place. We didn't pray for, for no after effects. You know, a lot of times, car accident, people have arthritis, get all kinds of stuff, even though the bones heal. It was hugely traumatic to the body, and they get arthritis, they get pain, they get trouble the rest of their life. Well, we didn't pray for any of that. The only thing that whole manual was focused on is they need to know they're loved and they're cared for, and there's a community of believers standing with them in their crisis. Yeah, that ain't me. That's a good start point. That was the first message Mary gave, compassion. And yes, it starts there, and they need to know they're loved, and they need to know that there's a group of people that are believing. But what are we believing for? Well, their last chapter said, well, that God would be glorified, even though they're going to be in a wheelchair the rest of their life, or they're kind of walk like this. Well, God's going to get glory out of that, because you're a mess. Yeah, that's where I fell off that particular training manual and went, yeah, that's not me. That's not what I see the word saying. So what is the next thing in line after compassion? 
and I, I we're just going to just whet your appetite here, and uh, then we'll spend some time on the coming weeks because we want to keep these sessions shorter, but yet cover them enough so you get it. So I'm just going to kind of whet your appetite. The next thing in line, in my mind, without any shadow of a doubt, is the Holy Spirit. Now, he's the one who works compassion in us, and he's, you know, so he started right from the get-go. But emphasis-wise, okay, so we're standing in front of this person, we're sitting beside this person's bed, we're in Walmart, and they're, they're asking for prayer. Okay, do I actually have any empathy or feeling for them? Start there. Number two, we won't get anything done without the Holy Spirit. We won't get anything done without the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John 15, without me, you can do nothing. And something that may help you in, in understanding prayer ministry, <clears throat> we have a series called The Offices of the Trinity. It's a, I went kind of in depth in it, so it's a little longer series. But what it does is it takes and separates the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit into their offices of how they relate with us under this covenant. Many people have never divided that out in their mind. You know, in the old saying, I, I had a minister, oh, this, I won't say who it was. It was within the last few years. They were leading people to Christ at the end of a service, and they said, we're going to invite Jesus in our heart. And... You know, went down that line, got people saved and so forth. And then after the service was over, we got alone. I said, could you give me one scripture for inviting Jesus in our heart? Other than Revelation 3, I stand at the heart, a door of your heart, and I knock. If anyone will. I said, that's the only one that I know of. I said, but could you give me one scripture that indicates at all that Jesus himself comes and lives in me? He, well, you know, this is what he said. He said, well, yeah, I know. I've thought about that, too. He said, but people like the phrase, and they understand the phrase. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's not Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit. Exactly. I can give you a lot of scriptures for the Holy Spirit. We're the temple of the Spirit. We're not the temple of Jesus. You've got the offices confused. Jesus is the head of the church. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He's our lawyer. He's our intercessor. He's, I mean, there's a number of things Jesus does now in his office. But one of them he does not do is come and live in everybody's heart. But I can tell you who does. The Holy Spirit comes and lives in every one of us. Well, when it comes to prayer time, we, a lot of times we mess that up. I'll give you another real quick example. The Father rarely speaks to you, the Father God. He will rarely. You show me in Scripture where the Father God speaks to people a lot. It isn't there. It's not his office. It's not what he's doing with us now. Did I do something? Okay. Um, Jesus will speak more than the Father. As the Lord of the church, he will speak more. But the one who hands down speaks the most? Well, what does Scripture say? Who was sent to teach us, lead us, guide us, show us all truth, take what Jesus said and give it to us? Who is the one who does all this? So when you're in a prayer line praying for someone, don't ask the Father to speak to you. Oh, Father, show me what to pray here. You may go for years before you hear anything from the Father. That's not his office. That's not his job. Now, you can ask Jesus, and he will speak more often. But do you know who will give you an answer every time? Holy Spirit. That's what he was sent for. That's what he's in you for. That's what he's on you for. That's what the anointing is for. So when we start into prayer... And I'm just going to wrap this up by giving you the four things we're going to cover. When we start into praying for people, go to the one who, need, who you need to help you, which in a prayer line, hands down, is the Holy Spirit. 
hands down. You know, it's, 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 if you would borrow money from the bank, you talk to the president, they said, yeah, we'll give you $10, you know, whatever. We'll put it in your account, and you just grab it. And a week later, you go into the bank and you say, hey, could I get that $10 that I borrowed from you? You're talking to the president. <clears throat> the president wouldn't go and, what would the president do? Well, let's go to a teller. It's already in your account. Just withdraw it. Once this thing is established by the Father, it's the Holy Spirit who disseminates it. Go to the Holy Spirit, make your withdrawal. Quit going to the president and asking for your 10 bucks. It's already in your account. Just withdraw it. Go to the teller. Go to the one who disperses. So we're going to cover four things. Let me just say this yet, and then we'll come back next week, and we'll take it a little further. The Holy Spirit, absolutely paramount. Number one, prayer. And I'll give you scriptures for all of these. I won't take the time this morning, but the, the one for the Holy Spirit is uh, Ephesians, where we're praying in the Spirit on all occasions for all things. And just a hint, that's not praying in tongues. That's not what that means. I was taught that growing up. Well, praying in the Spirit means we pray in the tongues. No, not what it means. I'll show that to you. So number one, when we're going to pray for someone, we have to pray in the Spirit. You say, why? Because your prayer will do nothing. Without God, you can do nothing. So if something's going to move, it's got to be by God. Well, which office is the one who's going to flow through us? Well, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me, and he lists five things that he anointed him for. Well, if that's what Jesus needed, how are we going to get around it? The Spirit of the Lord will anoint us. He will anoint you to say that first prayer. First word comes out of your mouth. He wants to direct it. And we should want him to direct it. Do you know why? Because the first word that comes out of our mouth that's undirected by the Holy Spirit is a waste of breath. It'll do nothing spiritually. It may sound good to the person, but if it's not directed by the Holy Spirit, it'll do nothing. So number one, the Holy Spirit, we have to pray by the Holy Spirit. Number two, everything that happens in our life comes by the promises, and lots of scriptures on that, but comes by the promises. It is the Holy Spirit, and we'll go to Ephesians 6, and we'll talk about the scripture there where it says, using the sword of the Spirit, or the sword the Spirit wields, is how the Amplified says it, which is the Word of God. So who wants to wield the Word of God through you? The Spirit. So whatever scriptures we use in that prayer... Whatever references we refer to, this is what God wants spoken, has to be by the Spirit. Not just grab, you know, I memorized one when I was in, in, in Ignite, so I'm going to pull that one out because it was a healing scripture. And that, Did the Spirit say you should pray that? Is he wielding that through you, or are you wielding that? Because if you're wielding that, well, the Word of God has its own inherent power, but it may not do anything in that situation because, again, it's us, not the Spirit. Number three... Are we in step with the Spirit? And this is a big one that we'll take a little bit of time on. But are we in step with the Spirit? Here is where our entire life makes a difference at the moment we pray for someone. Because we may be out of step with the Holy Spirit all week long. But when it comes time to minister, oh, we're going to get in step with the Spirit. Really? Really? It's like a good marriage. <laughs> you can be out of connection with your wife, and two of you are kind of on two different pages, a little bit aggravated with each other, and, you know, and then you want to talk about something you need to get an agreement on. Guys, have you ever experienced this? Hun, we really need to talk about this because we've got to come to agreement on this, and she's looking at you like, are you kidding all we did was fight all week long, and now all of a sudden, 
kissy kissy makeup and we're all going to agree and act happy? It don't work good. Finally, one guy admits it. You can be out of step with the Holy Spirit all week long and all of a sudden, okay, Holy Spirit, you and me together, we're going to do this. And he's going, you and me together, since when? All of a sudden, you want me to run in and just help you look good. And then next week, you'll be doing your own thing and you're out of step with me again. It doesn't work. He'll stop you and he'll take you back. And I say, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about the other? That's why when you're praying for people, before you start, okay, we're going to pray. And this thought will come to your mind of something you didn't obey in that you were supposed to. And you're going, I rebuke that thought because that's the devil trying to get me out of my faith. And this, No, it's actually the Holy Spirit saying, get in step with me so I can help you. Which is different than condemnation where you've already tried to get in step and you've asked forgiveness and you're working on it. And it comes in and says, this will never work. That's different. But there are times when we're going to lay hands on people, the Holy Spirit will bring back to you where you're out of step. And he wants you to stop right there. It doesn't take long to get in step. But he wants you to stop. Don't turn this into a game of, well, I don't have to live for God, but I'm going to flow with the power of God. No, you won't. You're going to live for God if you want to flow in the power of God. You're going to be in the step with the Holy Spirit if the power of God's going to flow. So we're going to talk about that. And the last thing we're going to talk about, obviously, at this point, uh, this comes up, which is, so what am I supposed to pray? Well, you're going to have to hear his voice. What am I supposed to quote for scripture? Well, you're going to have to hear his voice. Well, I can't hear his voice. You're going to struggle huge in prayer ministry. Not saying you can't pray for people. Not saying you won't get a result now and then. But until we can hear his voice, we're going to struggle. It's going to be really hit and miss. Because we can't do anything by ourselves. And here's where maturity comes in. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, not the children of God. The sons of God. They've grown up some. There's some maturity there. So those are the four things we're going to go into. And the uh, kind of trying to whet your appetite to say yeah let me pray about those four things before we even go into them and holy spirit start working on me let's stand i love how um the word or apostleship can kind of just put things in the flow. And when you get in that flow, it's, it's not about correction as much as it is, um, here's the path. And when you get on the path and we make straight the way for the Lord to show up, I mean, all the connections are there. We have the right to just connect. And um, so I'm excited about the, the weeks to come. But Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, by the Spirit. Holy Spirit, you show us you show us uh, what to pray, and when we don't know what to pray, you pray through us. Or when you're wanting to say something, you pray through us. Uh, there's tongues and interpretation. There's all kinds of different ways that you operate through us. And we think we're so thankful for that. We're so thankful. And so we yield to you right now because your word says that, Holy Spirit, you bring glory to Jesus. And Jesus brings glory to the Father. It is a flow down, and it is a flow up. And we want to be in that flow right now. So let's just put our hands out and yield to the flow of God. Holy Spirit, bringing glory to Jesus. Remember, we're lifting him up that he might draw men to him. And he brings glory to the Father. We yield and submit to your will and your ways, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen.